Yes, sir. From Ron Blanc, uh, Airline Regional News, uh, a question on the operation of the rec center uh, based on uh, financial numbers from when I was on the board and as I understand now, this, this rec center is losing vast sums of money. Next year, we may be losing over $100,000 on the operation of this rec center. And that would be that would be okay if we are just supporting uh, Rouse's point, youth and their sports. But basically, I believe the majority of the users of this are non-residents of Rouse's point. So in effect, next year, we could be having $100,000 of taxpayer money supporting the recreational activities of non-residents. I'd just like to know the position of the board on that. Well, I don't have the budget in front of me. We went through this about two months ago with you. It's not losing $100,000. The village invests money in the recreation of the village. There are outside residents that do use it. That's correct. Um, some of them pay through either the ice time when they're using it or the school or the uh, town contributes. Um, I, like I said, I don't have the number off the top of my head because if you asked me, I'd have, I'd have got it for you. But it's no, it's not 100000 The whole budget's probably not even 100000 or right about that. Uh, I'd like, like to see an exact financial record of the operation of this and the projected one for next year now that you're hiring an extra full-time person. Well, we're not hiring an extra person. We're hiring a replacement person. We're still down 50% of the staffing. So, anything else? Okay. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting of October 21st and a special meeting on October 25th. Uh, does the board have any comments on these? Comments or corrections? No, make a I, motion we go ahead. accept the minutes as read. Second. And a motion is second by Trustee Menard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bills? Any comments on the bills? Questions? Make a motion we his bills as written. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We must pay the bills. <coughs> we have correspondence? We have one this evening from Montgomery Hose Hook and Ladder. Dear Mayor and Village Trustees, each year the members of Rouse's Point Fire Department hold a children's Christmas party. This includes a visit with Santa, fire truck rides throughout the village, and goodies for all the boys and girls. This year the event will be held on Saturday, December 7th, commencing at noon at the Rouse's Point Fire Station. Once again, members are requesting approval from the village board to allow us to provide fire truck rides for those in attendance. We thank the board for their support over the past year, and we wish everyone the most joyous, healthy, and happy holiday season. Respectfully submitted, Dennis Roberts. And a motion? To uh, approve the fire department to use the equipment for their for the so Christmas Day party. A motion for that. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's all I have. Count last year, Ben. Do you know off the top of your head how many kids showed up to that? Oh, about I know it's really popular. Yeah, about 120 people. Yeah. Yeah. 120 kids. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's all. Okay. Um, I attended the the NIMFA conference in Syracuse last uh, Wednesday, and I made some pretty valuable contacts there, and I learned uh, quite a bit more, and it um, really helped me better understand how the electric system works on that end of it. And um, very good conference. Um, I'd like to request an executive session to discuss matters pursuant to the Taylor Law. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And I can re request a second executive session to discuss the employment history of a particular employee or employees. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have um, a resolution for the 2019. 29 general election office and terms. 
Where is the next general election for officers shall be held on March 18, 2020? And where is the Board of Trustees is adopting a resolution designating the offices to be filled in such election and the terms? Now there be it for there now there be it resolved. The Board of Trustees of the Village Rouse's point designates the following offices are vacant at the end of the current official year to be filled at the village election to be on Wednesday, March 18, 2020. Mayor, two-year term, trustee, two-year term, trustee, two-year term. It re further resolved that the clerk is hereby directed to publish the resolution in full in Press Republican. This resolution shall take effect immediately, and I move it to the floor for a second. I second that. Okay. Roll call vote. Trustee Arnold. Aye. Trustee Dart. Aye. Trustee Menard. Aye. Trustee Gadway. Aye. The mayor votes aye. Um, I also <coughs> like to make a motion authorizing the addition of Ethan Goslin, our new uh, facility manager, to be added to the procurement policy. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, that's all I have for right now. Trustee Arnold? The only thing I have is uh, we have a fireman over to the fire station that said uh, he'd like to paint the fire hydrants this summer. And if you had any other things to do with the fire hydrants, pump them out or whatever, he'd be interested in doing it. If you just show him how. Okay. Yeah, yeah he's great. So he said he's got a lot of time. He works at night. And Got something to do in the daytime. It'll be great. Just hook them up with the uh, water plant guys, and we'll show them you know, the paint and everything. Yep. Anything else? No, nope, that's it, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Trustee Dart. Okay, we'll start off with uh, we received uh, uh, a comprehensive inspection of our wastewater treatment plant uh, on October 28th. The inspection was done October 9th. We came through that inspection quite well. I made a note that our second operator up there is not, uh, he, is, he doesn't have his license yet, but Mr. Bavetta, the second operator, has, all, has, has been through his schooling in that he's just waiting to get, take the test, which is coming up in the near future. And uh, the uh, state of New York has given us until March 1st, 2020 for that to happen, so he'll be in plenty of time for that. But there was nothing really notable on the whole inspection report. Anyone can take a look at this if they wish. It's, uh, uh, I request an executive session to discuss the employment history of a particular employee. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Second by Trustee Menard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Trustee Menard. Uh, nothing for this evening. And Trustee Gadway. Uh, a couple things tonight. Uh, report on the RP Fitness in the Park. Uh, we had three different activities. There was karate with 43 kids in that. Uh, pickleball was eight kids and archery with a total of 16 kids. Uh, with the increased participation and attendance this summer, rental and community member feedback was positive and insightful during these sessions. The overall message received was very supportive of this activity. I'd like to thank Jan Letourneau for everything she does for this. And second, I want to thank Brian for getting the dehumidifiers back up and running. Perfectly get the right up and running perfectly. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Other reports. Um, Mr. Pelton. Yes, as you notice, the uh, line crew is out doing uh, equipment inspections. We'll be doing that for the next possibly eight days. They'll be going from transformer to transformer with a tester. We have to test for stray voltage. It's something that we do every year. There's a report that is filed with the PSC. So you'll see the two guys out there during the day. They have to go out one night to do the street lights while they're on. So if you see a flashing light out there, it's the guys doing the voltage testing. Uh, we finished up our blacktop today, so we're getting our plowed, plowed equipment in order for what's coming. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Mr. Cooper. No, the bill is just maintaining. Everybody's trying to finish up, of course. A lot of rushing going on, but I'll tell you what, we've had some pretty good contractors in the village. Pretty proud of them this year. 
didn't have to write many citations, and uh, everybody was very, very cooperative this year. Okay, thank you. Susan, what's the library doing? Uh, well, New York State has released the guidelines for the 2020 census grants that they'll be taking, so I'm looking through those and picking out what I can possibly write grants for um, to cover what we're going to have coming up. Maybe another computer, maybe an upgrade to some of the software or um, security. They haven't released the requirements, the security requirements yet, but they released the grant application. So um, NILA, the New York Library Association meeting, is uh, November 13th through the 16th, I believe. And at that, we'll find out what the requirements for the 2020 census is, and then I'll start putting in grants. OK, thank you. All right, uh, open meeting to the public one last time. And yes, we should address the board. We identify themselves and state their thing. Tom Berlotti, uh, owner, Ristorante Casa Capitano. Um, I have uh, several queries tonight, if you don't mind. Uh, one is concerning ERS investors. Um, it's, it's my understanding through uh, looking through some of the media press releases that I've got five articles here that ERS investors, and I remember about three sessions ago here during our um, your Monday evening sessions, I want to say about four or five Mondays ago, it's my understanding that ERS investors do not own the Pfizer facility. Is that correct? As far as I understand, they do own it. They closed it in October. Well, I have not heard of any, I have not seen any um, calling Clinton County. There doesn't seem to be any exchange of, uh, of deed of sales or anything concerning, concerning that transaction. Um, and, um, you know, there are five press releases basically that say, including their own press releases from Joan L. Velarde going back to November of last year where they purchased this property. And I recall specifically attending your meeting several weeks ago uh, where ERS investors did not own this property. So I have several concerns here. One is uh, driving by the property, I noticed that you're, they're filling in. Now, there's two companies from my understanding. There's ERS investors, and then there's ERSI, which is a remediation company which is involved in the cleanup which I didn't realize until I, until I started reading a lot of the articles in the news presses, and a little bit more about ERS. So my concern is that right now, they're actually filling up all of the landfill. They're, they're filling up all of the, the basements and all of the, uh, what do you call the foundations, which yeah. I don't understand why they would be doing something like that when you're actually going to be building an industrial village here. And it's my understanding that the most liberal the, the liberal zoning is it called industrial, meaning that you can pretty much do anything with an industri industrial zoning. Um, my question to you is, have you heard, number one, anything more on an industrial village company uh, coming with corporations that have signed up or, or coming to the village? No. You have not heard anything more? No. Uh, are you aware that there is a covenant of restrictions on this yes. property? Are you not concerned about that? Why would I be concerned about the covenant, covenant of restrictions? Property? Because there's only certain things that you can build on there. There's very few things that you can build on there. Actually, very few. on November 1st, actually, the Pfizer company, the vice president of Pfizer, actually signed a covenant of restrictions, restricting pretty much anything from being built on that property. And on November 12th, what happened is ERS claims that the Sun, I've got the Sun, I've got the Press Republican, I've got press releases from Gateway to the North Industrial Park at Ross's Point begins leasing efforts. I've got all kinds of things here that I've pulled out, and yet <coughs> there's doesn't seem to be any kind of deed of sale or exchange of property at all that's going on. I'd actually, being the mayor of Rouse's Point, or being our ambassador of the village of Rouse's Point, I'd actually like to know more about what is going on with this property. Probably Why do we have CDC. CBC Real Estate involved in this? CDC here? has a sign up there taking care of the property or reselling it. Well, I know, but they can't do anything with it then. 
<laughs> but so you must know that. You're, you're telling me you don't know anything. You're the village board. You're telling me you don't know anything more about what's going on with this property yet. All the press releases and everything here indicates that we've got a huge village coming here with thousands of, empl uh, of employees that are coming this way. I mean, surely you must know something. Sure, you are the village board. You're involved in all Two this. And I would honestly, my taxpayer money. Two buildings I, are currently being renovated for lease. They have tenants, I believe, lined up for them. They're putting, as you know, the Pfizer property was set up with on a central heating system, which was removed. That was one of the reasons the buildings couldn't be sold individually or reconfigured, because it was all on one central heating plant. So they're renovating those buildings to be standalone buildings for heat, electricity, and everything else. Um, at some point, probably next summer, they're going to run a loop of natural gas in there at different places, but they can't do that right now. Why would you run a loop of natural gas to foundations that are being filled in? I mean, I filled in my foundation because it's going to be a parking lot. Normally what you do is you remove the foundation because the plan is to build a structure there, which is my understanding, is you want to bring an industrial village into this area, and you wouldn't be filling in foundations if that was the case. So I'm a little bit con not concerned, but I mean, I can't help being suspicious of what's going on where you don't have a deed of sale, there's no transaction that's, not, that's gone on, and you've got a huge cleanup that's going on, and you've got landfill that's be basically being filled up. Aren't you suspicious about that at all? Can I answer, Mr. Mayor? Go ahead, and then we'll, then we'll conclude this. Mr. Berlotti, yes. one thing, they're filling in, there's only two buildings that had basements in that building, in that whole property. They're filling them in, bringing them up to ground level. For safety reasons. For safety reasons, and they also dug holes in the basement so the water wouldn't gather in there. The rest of them, they're leaving the cement slabs. They're not filling in any other basements other than those two buildings. So what does that serve when you bring in corporations or other companies where you basically... So you can lay cement down and put another building on top. So you're talking slabs? Is that what you're talking about? Yep. Okay, anyone else? I have some questions. Um, please identify yourself for the court. Sorry. I'm Judd I. Francis Stone. I live in town. Uh, obviously, I probably wouldn't be here. But, um, <laughs> bad joke. Uh, I, what's about the, what about the Taylor Law? I've never heard about that before. The Taylor Law is, pertains to um, civil service employees in New York State. And it, it basically, the part that you'd be most familiar with is that they're not allowed to strike, hmm. like school teachers. Like we don't have strikes like they have in Chicago right now, because. But there's the flip side of that is the Taylor Law nullifies many local um, labor contracts and negotiations and agreements over the years, and it puts them under one umbrella. Okay. And it's very general, but. Okay. Um, you mentioned that some meeting about, about the power distribution system. Yes. That you went to. Well, what did you learn from that? The one that I went to in in Syracuse. Yeah. I learned how, where our power comes from, how it gets here, how they divide it up, how they sell it, what affects the rates. Um, you know, it varies by demand. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do to get additional power additional hydropower versus nuclear power, which we call supplemental, but it's really nuclear. Um, and I, I met a number of contacts that are going to push us in the right direction on some things that we need to do within our system. Good. That's all I've got. Okay. Anyone else? I have another question. If um, no, go, ahead. go ahead, Ron. One more and that's it. Uh, yeah, a couple months back, uh, we had a presentation from ERS, and they said they would be here at the November 4th meeting to uh, to formally announce that they had acquired the Pfizer property. So, where are they? That's a, I think that speaks enough for itself. Okay, anyone else? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm I asked this, you... Uh, I'm closing this meeting. 
Are closing this yeah, portion of the public? Absolutely. Close That's the right. <laughs> Our, our procedures are you're allowed five minutes to address the board. Well, as you, a taxpayer, Mr. Mayor, 12. I would like a lot more than five minutes. To be honest with you, I pay a lot of taxes to this village, and I pay a lot of taxes. Okay, to you're out of order. Be quiet. Okay. Thank you very much. Can anyone else? Okay. I'll make a motion to go into recess. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll research. Yes. Government by secrecy. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> Government by I'll secrecy. Go there you go. Prime example. Government by secrecy. I'm going to take mine out.